I told you I would do a walk around on the Jeep, so I'm going to go through everything I got on it. So we'll start with the front. Basically, it just has these two hatches, latches on the sides um, that allow you to unlatch from inside the car. Do that on both sides, so that way if it's raining, you don't uh, have to go out in the rain to unhook it. And then you can climb through on the inside and unpop it and come up through the inside. It's got the ARB awning on the side here. That's been on it the entire time, but I've only deployed it, I think, twice. And I have the... Uh, the metal things that go on the ground and all that are inside the Jeep. I have another ARB awning that goes here and I never used it and I took it off pretty quick after I started camping with it because uh, I didn't use it and then I just put it in the garage so that'll be included. In the back here we have the windshield wiper with the uh, spray fluid that hooks in and then uh, I would say probably the only thing that I've never liked about it is this rubber gasket they have here. It's always been twisted since day one on this side because it catches when that closes. Um, but it doesn't leak. So that's probably my only gripe. Here's the inside latch. You pull that, it unhooks the back. I have the cargo area light here. And then um, you could see this. Let me see, uh, up here I have a wire running in for my diesel heater and that's what this is, which I'll be removing because I'm going to keep the heater, but I drilled a hole in the bottom of the bed platform for that to, to run into so that the thermostat could control uh, the heat inside the tent. And then this has a little bit of just weather on it, um, that's not really something that uh, you can really control that's just kind of the way it is the type of the metal that it is um so yeah let's see well i'll pop that in a second so i'm going to go ahead and close this uh, on this side over here same thing the rubber gasket that is on there is good it doesn't leak at all come around to the front it does have this weather strip right here that catches the rain and lets it uh, drip off what I did notice is that it, I put some more extended spouts here, but they came off in the driving, but it does let water drip inside the Jeep. Um, on top, we have a solar panel that I installed. And uh, I believe this is a 180 watt panel and it's hooked in with 8020. And then what I did was I had these Yakima amounts put on when I bought it and I just never really wanted to put something up on top and so I used this mount that was here to mount the 8020 and then it had a hole from the Yakima and then I drilled another one to go in and then I used black RV cock underneath it to seal it so that nothing would leak and these things are, are solid so it's good and then over here I had to put new holes here but those are all sealed and then this is a special uh, adapter so that wires can be sealed going inside um, and that's that but uh, I do have this running through a Victron Energy uh, charge controller which the wires come inside and I'll show you once we pop it they come inside and run down this inside pillar and then here and if you can see it back in there is that blue charge controller um, that uh, then it runs up through here and then into the battery compartment. I don't know if you have this on your Jeep, but on mine, this one handed, I have that Genesis dual battery set up, and uh, the solar panel actually keeps the uh, accessory battery charged when, uh, when the Jeep's not running. And then when the Jeep's running, the uh, alternator charges both batteries. So that way the refrigerator can stay running uh, pretty much non-stop. And uh, you don't have to be starting the Jeep every time. Uh, we have sliding windows on the sides, uh, both sides. And then up front here, this is uh, the headliner that has the mat pockets on both sides and then it has pockets here as well and this is all velcro for patches obviously 
And then up top here, you have the power. So it's got 12 volt, which is what I've been running my GPS on. And then you have some USB as well. And then you can turn off the 12 volt. I think that's what that does. And then you can have it on. Um, and then in the, the back seat, obviously you have your panels here so that you can climb through. I always kept the, the sleeping bags up top, so I couldn't really use this because the bed was already pretty much made. So we didn't really ever climb in through those. I did once or twice and it was a little bit more difficult. So let me uh, pop it open. that the canvas is all in really really good condition there's no mold or anything on it you can see the area where it did get pinched right there uh, but there's no tear all the way through it's the front of it and that's a mesh window right there And come around to this side. Ladder up here. And then you can see that it was pinched, but it's not torn. Uh, and then there's dust along the perimeter here. Inside, we have the map lights, reading lights on both sides. This is a to put down to keep the top up while you're inside you have the light here i did put that bungee in to help pull the sides in and i think that works well the bedding is all in pristine condition so we only we only used it maybe half a dozen times maybe 10 times there's no stains or anything like that um and then here's how you you know you have access to the jeep from there Okay, and then on this side here is where the 12 volt adapter is. And then that's that little hole where the, uh, the thermostat was coming in. And you could just put a little grommet right there to seal that if you needed to. Nobody would ever know. And then over here, I have the uh, two USBs. And then I made this thing here so you can Put your phone in there while you're sleeping. Put your wallet. I left my wallet in there. There's a receipt several times, uh, which is always fun because you got to pop the camper to get it out. And then the wires from the solar panel come in here. And I wasn't able, because of where I put the, the grommet from the outside coming in, I wasn't able to put this back in. But anyway, the wires run down here. They come down this panel, and then here, and then go inside the Jeep. This is the wires that go to the lights. So I just kind of ran it with all of those. Uh, the screen inside is all good. So you can do the mesh you want it to warm out I also uh, when it's really warm I would use this and I would clamp a little fan on it so that would have air moving inside here and that worked well uh, there's no mold or anything like that it was always uh, I think we only camped on it once in the rain and then I made sure it was dry before I put it away um, so there's never been any moisture or anything like that in here so so that's that and uh, 
not much else to it. It's pretty straightforward. There's some dust on the perimeter going around, but that's normal. And then uh, when you close it, you always want to make sure one of the windows is open, the sides, so that pushes all the air out. So, let's see. Jump up here. You know, it's just so easy. So with the bungee, that's pulling the front end. Go right and check it. Make sure it's all tucked in on both sides. Okay, and then just clamps it in. And if you ever forget the latches, they will rattle when you're driving. And then uh, you'll know to reach out and latch them. Ladder goes down easy. I like having the step ladder to go in and out. It makes it pretty easy. We just keep that bungee right there. And then if you feel like you left the lights on inside, you just flip those switches in the front above the driver and that turns off all the power to the uh, to the camper. So if I remember correctly, that one turns off the power to the camper. This one would turn off the GPS. Give it a sec, yeah. So if I turn that back on, it should come back on. Yeah, so the red one is control here. The blue one controls the camper inside. And then uh, that's that. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. GoPro stop recording.